back in New York on the East Coast. So first bottle back. So I figured maybe we'd have a little bit of fun with hybrid, which basically an old, typical old world grape grown in uh, California. This is 100% Grenache from uh, Napa by Relic, our good friends at Relic. It's called the Relic Paras Vineyard Grenache. It's a first bottling of this uh, Grenache in 2013 that basically uh, got access to a new uh, vineyard, to the Paras Vineyard. Uh, and based, the owners told them, okay, here's some blocks here and see what you can do with it. And as we've discussed before, Mike is, is always opportunistic about these things that come up. He'll try to do, he'll get the best grapes he can and he'll try to make the best wine he can from them, whether it's uh, Grenache, Cabernet, um, Chardonnay, Syrah, Pinot, of course, and all these things. So, um, uh, so here we go with... Uh, with their first bottling of uh, uh, Grenache. I've had these bottles for a while, and now I'm basically deciding, hey, let's see what this is all about. We've had uh, the archive Grenache uh, together, I think, you know, which is their more uh, sort of uh, entry-level bottling, if you want, that you can drink pretty much right out of uh, the gate. And this, so he's had access to Grenache vineyards before, primarily to go into his uh, ritual blend, which is a basically Southern Rhone blend, has Grenache, Syrah, and Mourvedre in it. But anyway, so that the archive was is very good, but let's see if this is different, and if it's, you could tell, you know, what's what. what. Anyway, uh, it was highly acclaimed when it came out, so I'm, I have really high expectations. Um, let's look at this. It's, it's really uh, more red. It's got that, a little bit of that burgundy, in it with a pale uh, ring around the edge, which probably comes because of the age. This is an eight-year-old wine uh, by now. Uh, it's unfined, unfiltered, so you do have a little bit of uh, the murkiness, uh, which I love in, in wine in general, uh, especially when it's this color, the darker murky, you know, don't ask me why. Uh, and so uh, let's just see, on the nose you got the gaminess a little bit. Now, that was in the beginning when I first opened it. It's still a little bit there, and that's good because it's got a little bit of that savory fat, so to speak, in it. I'm getting more of that candied licorice uh, now that it's opened up. And a little bit of fruit, um, hard to tell on which spectrum, you know, the sweet or the little bit more tart, but let's just see. Fruits opening up now, and it's really, it's a bit more, I think, raspberry, a bit more sort of orange peel. So on that spectrum, not super sweet. Uh, the licorice comes and goes. I think it's tied a little bit to the sort of the notion of alcohol. But anyway, it just looks like it's really, it looks just like an amazing wine. Let's see what we have. Mm. It's really got the layers, I think, that, that the, the archive Grenache does not have. The archive Grenache is really about fruit, about just happiness, you know, right now. This has these layers, uh, a little bit almost like a, almost like you can imagine uh, different rock layers, or geological layers. You got the, 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 the sort of the savory, then you got a little bit of the fruit underneath, a little bit of that uh, uh, sort of earthiness underneath, and then, which is kind of an alternation of layers. And then at the end, you just still have a little bit of that licorice left at the end. Let's just uh, have some more. Mm. The licorice comes out more on the finish. And it's really amazing because it, it is, and I mean it as a compliment. It is like a fine aged Chateau Neuf du Pape, the ones that are made primarily of Grenache. Because you can tell the difference between the ones that are 100% or 90% Grenache and the ones that have Mouvet and other stuff in it. And so that's where I would put this one on that spectrum. And I think in another, this bottle could probably last another 10 years. Now, I don't know, you know, that uh, I'm gonna wait another 10 years till 2013, but certainly the more recent ones 
will age uh, very, very well because there's been a lot of uh, very good vintages since. Anyway, I'm very glad uh, I was able to open this and uh, like, why not? We need to try what we have in the cellar just to see if we want to buy more and to constantly update, uh, I think, you know, ourselves on what our favorite winemakers are doing. So good job, Mike, and uh, looking forward to uh, the new vintages. See you all and uh, have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye.